Hello and welcome to this series of videos which are an introduction to the mathematics of signals. This is a 10 part series of short video lectures. My name's Dr Jonathan Andrew Hargreaves and I'm a lecturer in acoustical and audio engineering in the acoustics research group at the University of Salford. So first of all let's just say a bit about the purpose of these videos, why, why have I made them? Uh, and they're really here to answer core questions such as what is a signal, what is a spectrum, how can they be written mathematically, how are these two things, a signal and a spectrum, related mathematically, and how are they handled and processed in digital systems as are ubiquitous these days. And we'll write all these things mathematically. There's a couple of reasons for this. Uh, it makes what we'll learn precise, uh, so instead of kind of dis dis discussing things in a fairly vague sense, mathematical statements are very precise, you can then take them on and use them in other ways. Uh, and it makes what we'll learn also portable. Uh, so what I mean by that is you can apply it to all sorts of different physics. You'll see this same analysis turning up in physics, in engineering, in electrical engineering, in acoustics, in audio, seismology, all over the place. Uh, anywhere they deal with systems or anywhere they deal with dynamically vibrating systems, you'll see all this stuff turn up. Uh, and the maths makes it portable. It can be reapplied to all these different areas very easily. Uh, and I've, in these videos, will occasionally sort of allude to certain applications just to try and help the explanation, but I'm not going to talk specifically about any application, not really even that much about audio, frankly. It's generally about signals in a very broad sense. Also, um, in terms of what well, this might be useful, the series could be they could work as an introduction to digital signal processing. Uh, all, this, all the concepts here are required for that. So if you're going to start a course, you want to start a bit of a pre-briefing or finding the learning curve a bit steep, then some of this might help with you with that, particularly the earlier bits where I've really tried very hard to start from first principles um, instead of just sort of assuming things and, and, and starting too quickly. Um, it's also generally useful to anyone working in acoustics or audio or any other fields of engineering for that matter since signals, spectra and the processing that connect them are ubiquitous, they're all over the place. So even if you don't know about this stuff, you'll be using devices that does this stuff. So by doing that, you're kind of failing to understand some of the things that are, that are going on. If you can understand these concepts, it will give you a better grasp of what's happening. And they're also produced in part to help students who might be coming onto our postgraduate courses from other disciplines. So I'm the programme leader at present in our MSc Audio Acoustics and MSc Environmental Acoustics programmes, uh, which you can find out more about at salford.ac.uk if you're interested. Um, now they should already know the majority of this material according to our entry requirements, but what we find in practice is that they sometimes have knowledge gaps uh, often in terms of how we write and how we use it. So they might have heard of the concepts, but they don't really know how we're going to apply them to signals or systems. So this should hopefully help with that as well. So a quick overview of all the topics and outline. Uh, so first of all, in the first one, we're going to introduce continuous signals and spectra. We're going to talk about what a signal is, what a spectrum is. We're going to talk about some single, sim signal, uh, simple signal statistics, such as mean and RMS. Then we're going to introduce sampled signals and spectra. Uh, we're going to talk about their representation in computers using arrays. We're going to talk about peak mean and RMS again. And we're going to talk about how you might uh, compute things like derivatives as differences between samples or integrals of sums as samples. Then we're going to introduce real-time harmonic signals. Uh, we'll talk about their properties, their amplitude, frequency and phase. We'll talk about why they're interesting. Then we'll come to real Fourier series. It really formalizes the idea that's cropped up in part three, that other signals can be built up from these time harmonic signals. We'll give some definitions and we'll give some examples and show how it works. And finally, a little bit of an aside and, and one that's not quite so essential for the second five lectures on the second page is, why do time harmonic signals follow functions and trigonometry? And, and I personally think this is quite an interesting question. Uh, it, they do, uh, and you hear a lot of people talk about it, but I've rarely heard anyone talk about why. So I thought it'd be really interesting to address that and answer that little question. And I think it will help with some of the understanding for later videos. 
Then we have complex time harmonic signals is part six. So what changes in notation might we have to use to use complex numbers to uh, explain signals? And what benefits might this bring? Why do we want to do it? Then we'll introduce a complex version of Fourier series. So sort of combine the ideas from part four, uh, real value Fourier series and part six, complex valued signals. Uh, and look at what benefits that will bring and what effect it has on spectrum. Then we'll introduce the Fourier transform in its complex variant uh, and we'll talk about how this is related to Fourier series and we'll talk about the idea of spectral density that comes from that as well. Finally, we'll get back to something a bit more concrete, which is how you actually compute these spectra and we'll talk about the discrete time Fourier transform and the fast Fourier transform FFT algorithm that does that. Uh, we'll talk a bit about the consequences of this um, uh, working sample data that is, and we'll talk a bit about organization of this data into computer memory. Finally, uh, another kind of mouthful of a sentence, approximating a Fourier transform with a Fourier series calculated using an FFT. Sounds like an extraordinarily bad idea, but this is what almost all algorithms and devices do. So it's worth having a look at that. Um, and there's some questions about what happens when uh, signals don't quite meet the requirements of Fourier series uh, and what happens then and what solutions can you bring. And that is the end. Uh, there's obviously loads of other topics in digital signal processing that you can look into, but this is where I've chosen to end because I think this is where general background knowledge for anyone studying acoustics and engineering in general and anyone studying digital signal processing kind of diverge. Um, after that, you're on two different tracks, really but this is supposed to be background common to both. So I hope you find them all very interesting. Thank you.